Auntie Pai, uh, Head of, uh, well, Economist and Director at Nascent Advisory and Research, joins me in studio. Thank you for being with us. Good Nandi. afternoon. So he has a point there that uh, these harsh realities were faced, at least, mm. at, at least he was realistic. Um, but but the rand still still plunging? Do you think it goes beyond that? It does. I mean, I think it's one thing to tell the truth. It's quite another to say, how do we fix the problem? And I think that's the main thing, that, you know, um, all of us agree with what he's saying. You know, he put down mm -hmm. some really hard facts uh, in terms of the situation that we are facing. But then there's too little detail in terms of how do we get past this. You remember before that, you know, when he started out in April, one of the things he said, for example, was we have a 14-point plan. Um, and I think one of the things that perhaps people were expecting is how have we been doing there? What's the progress? Yeah. Because as part of actually the narrative in terms of because it's about how do we get out of this club because it's one thing to tell us the truth and create almost a, you know, a panic because now you are admitting something that we've been saying all along. How do we then move on from here? And I think that's part of the panic that we are saying. So there were lots of hard truths. Uh, what is the one that needs the most detail? There's the budget deficit. Uh, we're waiting deep into debt. There's lower growth than expected. There's a 50 billion rand hole in, in tax revenue. W what's the big issue? Um, I think it's one thing, uh, it's how we actually make sure that we manage our spending going forward. Um, I think in a sense, you know, he says, look, we're going to try and keep that cap. But there are a lot of pressures that are actually out there, you know, um, waiting for us. Certainly, the state-owned enterprises are one big pressure that seems to that government is struggling to actually contain. Mm -hmm. The other one, of course, is that big wage bill. I think, you know, we're starting to hear um, Kosato, for example, say, uh, sorry, um, the Satu saying, look, we're going on strike, we haven't been getting increases, we want um, more money, and you will see the public sector, of course, asking for more money. And anything above what he has indicated will certainly cause um, a lot of panic. So the pressures are, are upward in terms of what we need to spend. The students, of course, are also going to come out and say, look, um, what you've given us is too little, we want much more than what you are giving. And all those pressures are upward, mm -hmm. let alone the fact that, of course, we are just not raising enough money, and our plan to raise the money doesn't seem strong. So does he have to look strong enough to resist those pressures, basically? He absolutely has to resist those pressures, but it's difficult to see, especially given this kind of political environment. And of course, you know, the NC has the kinds of problems that it has, and certainly going into elections. How does this, actually, this government contain those mm -hmm. pressures that are very important to voters? We know voters are, young, are going to be young people uh, in particular who are actually going to high school and university, first-time voters. We also know that, that they are the public sector. So if you don't please them, how do you go into an election? and be able to contain spending. It's a major risk. It's so difficult uh, here at the SABC. He hardly mentioned the SABC that needs a bailout. <laughs> Jobs are at stake. Uh, yeah. um, is, is there incongruity? Because he says, you know, state-owned companies mustn't uh, use us for uh, just running operations anymore, for mm. wastage, etc. <laughs> whilst at the same time allocating more to SA. A, a uh, saying 350 billion rand in total guarantees for for ESCOM is that one of the incongruities? Yeah. Uh, should, what should he be saying? You know, are we yeah. going to let you loose or, or what? That's the thing. He doesn't have a, much of a choice. I think you know this is well articulated by him as well. That if you let, for example, um, SAA uh, default. You've already given SAA um, guarantees. So you've already promised people to pay for SAA's yeah. debts. You have so to you have to keep going because if you stop now, the whole thing will collapse and actually will add further pressure. So, you know, he has a stop, I suppose a short term uh, sort of stop, a plug in. But then that means also uh, he has to find a longer term plan that makes sense. I think, you know, in particular, how do you actually lay out a long term plan and show? the resolve now. And I think, you know, where they've been failing is to show that resolve of we are actually going to do this. Remember also, it's about people watching what the promises have been made since, you know, the removal of uh, Minister Nene and going forward through the downgrades and everything else that Pra Praveen Godan promised, what he promised when he started, and saying, you've made all these promises, but where have you actually kept them? Yeah. And I think it's becoming more and more difficult now to convince people so that... So people are just tired of the talk. Of the talk, and let's see. And actually showing that action is going to take some time. So what... What is going to happen with the RAND? Because we've seen it uh, slide quite dramatically, I think almost 50 cents since the start of, the of the budget yesterday. Will, will that continue? Well, I mean, it's likely to continue because I think, you know, people are looking for more information and everything that keeps emerging so suggests that actually we are not clearing up. I mean, it's one thing, you know, uh, as I was saying earlier, that perhaps, you know, the minister should be quiet in some sense because it is difficult for him and I, I think we can have some sympathy for him mm -hmm. in the sense that it's very difficult now to give anything. It's going to be a long game.
in terms of actually him being able to do anything to contain the problem. I think a lot of analysts are coming out and you know, a lot of people are raising new kinds of corners and new kinds of ideas. Um, and so the panic might actually start uh, to heighten. So the point, I suppose, now is to try and you know, say as little as possible and do as much as possible. Perhaps that's the way forward. I, I, I like that idea because we're in a very vulnerable position. Uh, some people were saying maybe uh, global investors who understand more about our country are waiting until December. Let, let's wait and see how the politics plays out. Now we're starting to see this RAND slide earlier. So, so could the fallout kind of, of, of our political instability, perceived uh, political instabil instability be starting to play out earlier than expected. And, and, and I think one of the things is that, you know, investors tend to, you know, read into these things. You know, they've got economists and analysts and politics and all over. And one of the things they try to do is to expect what's going to happen. You know, and there was a sense of expectation about that deficit, you know, that 4.3% wasn't such a big shock. You would have, you know, I mean, I think if people were, you know, that shocked, mm -hmm. you would have seen a bigger deterioration in terms of the rent. So but people had a, you know what I mean, it could be worse. So people had that and so now I suppose also as information uh, you know trickles in as people study everything that's going on perhaps um, there is a lot of alarm that is starting to be sounded about how bad things could be and of course um, one of the worst things that happened is also the ratings agencies have started talking and they are saying also they are worried and so the ratings agencies are actually not helping him because they are now sounding a little bit more um, yeah. uh, of terms of the alarm. In, in finality uh, so they're talking, there's concern about Treasury and its ability to act. That, that uh, 51 billion rand hole in, in tax revenue collection, how serious is that for another institution, SARS? It's a serious thing, and I think one of the problems with SARS as well is that it's gone also through this own credibility phase, right, in terms of the politics of SARS and what we've seen um, going out there. And so people are starting to worry also, is, are we getting the right numbers from SARS? And I think that's also another big question that people are starting to answer. And so that might also be something that worries. Is SARS also capable as an institution to help us through this in terms of being able to collect uh, properly and to get people to trust us to give mm -hmm. um, money over to SARS? These are the kinds of questions that are happening, especially in the wake of uh, KPMG and everything else that has happened around that institution. So that's not helpful either. More questions than answers. Thank you so much for your analysis. Nanti uh, Pai from Nascent uh, Advisory and Research.